Hello, I'm Professor Mohamed Omar, and in today's video, we're going to discuss a counting problem that has a surprising consequence in number theory. Okay, so the problem is how many ways are there to paint the beads of this necklace here, probably the ugliest necklace you've ever seen, each bead colored with one of eight colors. If two paintings are considered the same, if one can be rotated to obtain the other. Uh, so example, we could color the beads in the following way, this one red, this green, and then this blue, this green, and this blue. And that would be considered the same as if we had the coloring where this was rotated by, this is 360 divided by 5 degrees or 72 degrees, where we have red here, and then we alternate green, blue, green, blue, green, blue. Okay, so it's not really clear how to go about starting this problem, but luckily there's this interesting theorem that allows you to solve this in a simpler way. This theorem, actually usually referred to as a lemma, called Burnside's lemma, allows you to count in a different way when counting, taking symmetry into account. Okay, I won't go into the details of the proof of Burnside's lemma, if you want, you can take a look at a podcast that I was interviewed on where I actually talk about this lemma in more detail. Uh, okay, so how does Bernstein's lemma work? It essentially says the following. If you want to count the number of paintings up to this rotational symmetry, what you can do is write all of the symmetries down. So the symmetries of this necklace, um, there's the zero degree rotation, which does nothing. There's turning uh, clockwise 72 degrees, that's 360 divided by five degrees, that keeps the, bead, the necklace intact. And then there are all the other subsequent rotations. 72 degrees again for a total of 144 or two times 72 degrees. Three times 72 degrees and four times 72 degrees. Okay, so there are the five rotations. And for each rotation, you want to record the number of ways to color the beads or paint the beads that are fixed under that given rotation. So let's take the 72 degree rotation as an example. Say you had a coloring and it was fixed under a 72 degree rotation. Let's say, for example, that this bead was colored red. Now, since the coloring does not change when you rotate by 72 degrees clockwise, it means that this bead has to have the same color as this bead. But by the same logic, this bead will have to have the same color as this bead, and so on. So, if a coloring is fixed under a 72 degree clockwise rotation, then all the colors of the beads have to be the same. Since we have eight colors at our disposal, the number of colorings that are fixed under the 72 degree rotation is eight. So we'll record that number down. Okay, you can probably convince yourself that the same is gonna be true of a two times 72 degree rotation. If we have this being red, a coloring being fixed under this rotation means that if we go 144 degrees, we'd have to have this bead red. And then similarly, this bead has to be red, and then this has to be red, and then this has to be red. So the number of colorings that are fixed under a two by 72 degree rotation is eight as well. Okay, if you try this with the other rotations here, you'll get the same phenomenon, that the number of rotations that are fixed under a three times 72 degree rotation and a four times 72 degree rotation are eight and eight as well. And the reason why has to do with the fact that we have five beads. There's a prime number and no matter what, um, we'll, when we rotate it around um, any constant multiple times this angle, right, we're gonna be forced to have all the colors be the same. Uh, okay, 
So finally, we have this zero degree rotation. Now, any coloring of the beads is going to be fixed under this because we're not moving the necklace at all. Right? And the number of colorings, well, we have eight possible colors that we can choose for this bead and then eight subsequent ones for this bead independent of what we choose for this one. So there's 64 in total. And then eight more for this, giving eight cubed, etc. And so the number fixed under um, zero degree rotation is eight to the five. So what Burnside's lemma says is if, if you want to count the number of rotations up to symmetry, um, you count the number of colorings that are fixed under each of the rotations and take their average. And it turns out to be the same as the number of paintings up to rotational symmetry. Okay, so this is the total number of colorings, which simplifies to 8 to the 5 plus, and I'll write it this way, this is 8 times... 5 minus 1. Because we have exactly one rotation that's not one of the one rotation that's not one of these ones right here. Over 5. Okay, so I want to make some observations. So first of all, the fact that we got these 8s here had to do with the fact that we had 5 beads and 5 is prime. So the result that we'd have in general if 5 was replaced with a prime number, would be we'd have that prime number in the exponent here for the number of beads that we're coloring, and we'd have p minus 1 copies of this number 8 right here. So in general, if we replaced the number of beads from 5 to a prime p, we'd have this formula for the number of colorings by Burnside's lemma. Similarly, we, we used eight colors in our painting. We could have used a general number of colors like n to generalize this result even more to say that if we had p beads in a necklace and n colors to choose from, we'd have this formula for the total number of colorings. Okay, so there's something actually really interesting about this. This has to be an integer because it's actually counting something. So that means that p divides the quantity in the numerator, n, p, plus, and I'll write it this way, p times n minus n. Okay, p already divides this quantity right here, so if p divides this entire quantity here, p would have to divide this intermediate quantity right here, n to the p minus n. Now this is kind of wild, because this is a theorem that actually appears in a lot of number theory textbooks. It's called Fermat's Little Theorem. And it states that if you have a positive integer n and a prime number p, then p has to divide the quantity n to the p minus n. And usually it's proved using a bunch of modular arithmetic type calculations, um, but we were able to establish this completely from combinatorics. So this is a phenomenon that happens quite a bit in mathematics where one field can influence another. In particular, in this case, we have these co theorems from counting, combinatorics, giving us theorems in number theory. That exchange actually happens both ways between combinatorics and number theory in a lot of research, um, even today. So an interesting result that comes for free from a combinatorial thing by surprise. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please click the like button below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel.